In this video, the four basic rules of differentiation, very useful to you if you're first learning about differentiation, for example, if you're in your first year of A-levels or you're first learning about calculus. On the screen, you see three rules. We're going to go through the fourth in a moment. Uh, now, in this video, we're going to be going through examples using these rules. If you want to understand them and understand how they work, see my previous video in this series. So the first one, the power rule, says if we have a function f of x equal to a x to the power n, then the derivative is equal to n a x to the power of n take 1. Again, I derived this and I explained how this works in the previous video. In this video, it's all about uh, going through examples and building that understanding. The second rule is co the constant rule. It says if we have a function equal to a constant, some you know number k, uh, for example, k could be 2 or 10 or 500, then the derivative is equal to zero. The constant multiple rule says if we have a function equal to a g of x, where a is a constant, then the derivative is equal to a multiplied by the derivative of g of x. This means we can basically ignore any constant in the front of some other function of x, for example. So for example, this might be 2x squared. You can just derive the x squared and you can, you can ignore the 2 in front of that function. Uh, and these are pretty intuitive. They might sound complicated, but once we go through examples, you'll, you'll see what how they work and, and what these rules actually mean in practice. Also, there's a note up here. Um, if we have a function equal to y, then it's the same thing writing f dash x as dy on dx. They both mean the derivative. So it's just different notation for the same thing, basically asking you to find the derivative of the function. Okay, let's go through some examples then, starting off with, uh, you know, one of the most basic type of problems you can have. Uh, it says find dy and dx given that y equals 1 over the cube root of x. So this is the derivative of uh, a basic function. Yes, there's a cube root in there, but it's only a singular term. So to start this one off, I would probably write this slightly differently. So you need to know that you can write uh, cube roots as x to the, to the third. Uh, so you could do this in two steps. You could say this is y equal to 1 over x to the third. That's the same thing as a cube root. And then if we have 1 over x to the third, you can write that as x to the negative 1 third. Okay, that's you know GCSE stuff. Hopefully you're uh, familiar with that. Okay, so now I'm going to derive this using the rules that we just talked about. Um, specifically this first one that says if we have a function ax to the n, then the derivative is n a x to the n take 1. So in this case, the a, the constant in front of the function, is just 1. So we can kind of ignore that part of this rule. So we're just looking at the exponent n, and what happens to the exponent? We subtract 1 from it, and we bring the exponent to the front of the term. Okay, so what that looks like is, well, we have this function, y equal to x to the negative third. That exponent we bring to the front. In other words, it comes down the front of the term. So we're going to have a negative a third uh, as the constant in front of the function. And then we subtract one from that exponent. So here we're just doing negative a third subtract one. Um, well, think of that as like one plus a third. That's one and a third, or you could write it as four thirds. But because we're talking about negative take one, then it's going to be negative four thirds. So then this becomes x to the power of negative four over three. All right, hopefully that made sense. It does get complicated when you're talking about fractions, but try not to get too thrown off by the fractions. Just concentrate on the process we're actually using, and it should start to make sense. Again, if you want to understand why this works, see the previous video in this series. Okay, second example says, given that 2y squared take x cubed equals 0 and y is greater than 0, find dy on dx. Here we have, we don't have it written as we have been looking at before where it's f of x equal to, we have, we need to rearrange it first. So the first thing I'm going to do is add x cubed to both sides. So we have 2y squared equal to x cubed and then divide by 2. So we have y squared equal to x cubed. Uh, and actually I'm going to write it as a half x cubed, because now we have the, the a x to the power n in the form that it was in that rule we saw before. 
And now we can take the square root because we know y must be greater than zero as they tell us in the question. So I can take the square root of both sides and I don't have to worry about the negative solution. So if I take the square root of both sides, this will be one over the square root of two, and then this will be x to the power of three on two. Another way of writing the square root of x cubed. Okay, remembering that rule we're using, we've got f of x equal to ax to the power n, and the derivative is going to be n ax to the power of n take one. It's always good if you're first learning about these rules to rewrite them as you go through questions. It helps you to remember them. So what do we have to do here? We have to bring that exponent to the front of the term. So that exponent three on two becomes the coefficient or multiplies by the coefficient. So I would just write it like this initially. And then we need to subtract one from three on two. So, and I should write dy on dx. Let me just double check I wrote that up here. No, I didn't, apologies for that. Uh, so I, sh I uh, made a little error there. Hopefully uh, uh, you can excuse me for that. Okay, so now I'm using the correct notation. I'm taking the derivative. And as I was saying, I need to subtract one from that exponent. So three on two take one, that's one and a half take one is just a half. So this is our derivative now, and let's go ahead and try to simplify this a little bit. Um, so we've got three in the numerator here and two root two in the denominator. And we've got X to the power of a half, which we could write as the square root of X. Uh, you can also rationalize this if you want. So if we multiply uh, the numerator and denominator by root two, then we're going to get three root two X over um, four. Um, but you know, they're just little details. We're focusing on the process of taking that derivative for now. So this would be fine for a final answer. Okay, hopefully this is starting to make sense. Now uh, on to the next couple of examples. Here we have an example with more than one term. So you might be thinking, what do we do here? This is where the fourth rule comes in. So there is a really nice rule that helps us with these things. Um, and it's uh, the addition rule. It says if we have a function equal to g of x plus h of x, uh, these are just terms in relation to x, then the derivative is the derivative of g plus the derivative of h. So in other words, we can take the derivative of each term separately using the rules we've just talked about. Um, and this is really nice. So we have looked at examples like this in previous videos where we used uh, differentiation from first principles to get this the derivative of, func of a function like this. And it took a lot of steps, but using the addition rule, you're going to see it's much, uh, much quicker and much more efficient. Okay, so we're going to be able to differentiate each term separately. So it says find dy and dx when y equals two x squared takes six x to the power of one plus three. Uh, so taking this derivative, we're just going to look at each term separately using the power rule we've just been using. So here we look at the power, the exponent two, and we multiply that by the coefficient. So that's going to be four X. And then we subtract one from the exponent Two take one is just one. So we could write one there, but you know, we don't need to, we can just leave it as X, it's the same thing. Then we have six X to the power of one. I didn't really need to write that one, but I was just trying to make a point. So one multiplied by six is six. And then one take one is zero. What is X? to the power of zero, that's just one. So this is going to be six times one or just six. Then the constant on the end, remember that other rule we talked about the constant rule, the derivative of any constant is zero. So our final answer here is four X take six. See how fast that was using the addition rule. Um, this is a really nice rule uh, that really uh, helps uh, when you're first learning about calculus. Okay, the next example says differentiate x take two over x squared. For this problem, I'd suggest doing some rearranging like we did before. So I would write that, let's say this is f of x equal to, I'd write that as uh, x over x squared take two over x squared. Okay, so now we have two terms that we can differentiate separately. Um, the first term we could simplify. Uh, so this is going to be one over x take two over x squared. And then I would even write it differently again. One over X, I would write as X take X to the power of negative one. 
and then 2 over x squared I'd write as 2x to the power of negative 2. Okay, this makes using the power rule uh, easier. So then we can say the derivative of f of x, uh, using that power rule, we, we t look at the exponent, multiply it by the coefficient, so this is going to be negative x to the power of negative 2, and then for the second term, the exponent is negative 2, we multiply that by the coefficient, negative 2 times negative 2 is plus 4, and then subtract 1 from that exponent, that's x to the power of negative 3. And then if you wanted, again, to write that as fractions, for example, you could write it as uh, negative 1 over x squared plus 4 over x cubed. Just so you're aware that, you know, you can write these things in different ways. Okay, the next example has four terms in it. I'm showing you this example just to show that this addition rule expands to functions with many, many terms. It doesn't just have to be two or three. Um, so here we just differentiate each term separately. So let's say this was y equals, then the derivative is going to be. Now this gets quite fast once you get used to it. Uh, so if you look at x cubed, after a while you can see, well, this is just going to be 3x squared, multiplying the coefficient by 3, taking 1 from the power. Then the next one, 18x, 2 times 9 is 18, take 1 from 2 is 1. Then 24x, using the constant rule, it's just the constant multiple rule, it's just 24, and then the constant on the end, differentiating any constant is 0. So you can see this gets quite quick after a while once you get used to it. Okay, let's look at um, a, uh, an example with some context. So this one says, find the point on the curve f of x equal to x squared, take 5x, where the gradient is 0. So this is asking you to understand what uh, the derivative actually means in terms of uh, the graph of the function. We talked about this in the first video in this series. Uh, you know, what is the derivative? Let's firstly think about what this graph looks like. x squared take 5x. Hopefully you recognize this is a quadratic. It's a positive quadratic. So it's going to look something like this. Okay. And then if we're asked to find the point on the curve where the gradient is 0, the only point on a quadratic where the gradient is 0 is the turning point down here. Right, the gra a zero gradient is a horizontal line. Uh, any other point on that curve is going to have some gradient, uh, non-zero gradient. Okay, and how do we find that gradient? Well, that's what the derivative is all about. Because once we differentiate this function, that gives us the gradient of this curve at any point. So the first thing we want to do is to find f dash of x. So using the, the power rule we've been using already, this is going to be 2x and minus 5. And now we say, well, if we want the gradient equal to 0, we let f of x, f dash of x equal to 0. And um, we say, when f dash of x equals 0, 2x take 5 equals 0. So remember, again, going back to that first video, the derivative is the gradient of this curve at any point. So 2x minus 5, let's say I pick a point, let's say I pick a point over here. And again, this graph isn't perfect, I know, but just as a, an example, let's say I pick this point, uh, the gradient of this line will be 2x minus 5. What do I mean by that? I mean, if we take the x coordinate, whatever that x coordinate is, I plug it in to this, uh, this expression here, that will give me the gradient of this line, okay? So let's say this um, x coordinate was, have to be a bit larger, wouldn't it? Um, let's say this x coordinate was 10 or something. Again, I'm just making this up, so sorry if it doesn't look perfectly accurate. But if this x coordinate was 10, this gradient then would be two times 10, minus 5, so that's 15. Okay, so that line would have a gradient of 15 as an example. This line down here, the gradient where the gradient is 0, we're, we're kind of doing the opposite. We're saying, well, we don't know the x-coordinate, but we know that that gradient must equal 0, or we want to find the x-coordinate where the gradient is equal to 0. 
that's what this that's what we're doing here so when the derivative is equal to 0 2x minus 5 the equation of the gradient is equal to 0 this allows us to find the point on the curve where the gradient is 0 so solving this for x we get 2x equal to 5 and then dividing by 2 x equals 5 on 2 then not quite finished we need to plug that into the original function to get the full set of coordinates so then we say when x equals 5 on 2 or you could even just write f of x f of 5 on 2 plugging that in here we're going to get 5 on 2 squared take uh, 5 times 5 on 2 and solving this this is going to be 25 on 4 subtract 25 on 2 and then we could think of that as 25 on 4 subtract 50 on 4 in other words negative 25 on 4 um, and that's uh, almost 6 right actually a bit more than 6 so 24 divided by 4 is 6 so that's going to be a negative 6 and a quarter okay so now we have our coordinates our coordinates uh, so we could say the turning point or the well, the gradient is 0 gradient is 0 at 5 on 2 negative 25 on 4 so that was an example with some context having to understand what it means to find the derivative what we're actually doing here in terms of a graph of a function and there you go so there were some examples using these rules the power rule the constant rule the constant multiple rule and the addition rule hope you found that useful uh, i hope you can go away and do some more examples and really uh, get to know these rules and get some good practice in so leave a like if you appreciate this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.